Hey guys, I'm Vicky. Today I'm going to be talking all about the creepy crawlies that lurk in your home and how to keep their population numbers under control. I'm talking about common household teeny tiny bugs that live in your house. They live in your house no matter what you do, but there are certain things you can do to keep population numbers under control so that it doesn't irritate your skin, so that they don't bite your skin, so that they don't just infest your entire home. The main bugs I'm going to be talking about are fleas, bed bugs, dust mites and ticks. Now I'm not saying that ticks are a common problem in the UK because they're not, but they are a growing problem. So I am just going to touch on them in this video. Obviously this is mainly about UK household bugs. I don't even want to think about the cockroaches that live um, in houses in some parts of the world and the massive spiders and stuff. Like I don't know how you guys do it. If you're from Australia or certain parts of America, um, like well done for surviving. I can cope with it. <laughs> okay, so as I said, these type of household bugs, particularly the dust mites and the bed bugs, can be fairly common in your home. Fleas can come in and out of your house regardless of whether you have a pet or not. Obviously, it's more likely if you do have a pet, but they can just hop onto your clothes and hitch a ride if you're out for a walk somewhere, even just in your garden. They live in your garden, so all of these bugs can enter your home in a variety of ways. Dust mites certainly, they're probably already here munching on your dead skin under your bed. Blech. Now this video isn't intended to freak you out too much or to make you feel guilty and make you think oh my god I've got to like do this mental cleaning thing of my entire house otherwise like you know I'm going to be eaten to death in the night. It's not about that, it's just about giving you a few tips that let you know how to keep population numbers of these particular bugs under control. Things that you can do on a day-to-day -day basis, some of these things are very simple, quick things that you can do, and some of these are things just to do when you're having, you know, like your annual spring clean or a deep clean before Christmas if you've got guests coming over, that kind of thing. Okay guys, so my number one bit of advice is to change the bedding on your bed, your kids' beds, weekly and to wash at 60 degrees. 30, 40 degrees is not gonna kill the bugs and it's not gonna kill the eggs that they lay in your bed, unfortunately. 60 degrees will wipe them out. Now, I'm not saying that I'm perfect and wash my bedding every single week. I don't, I, I really don't. Sometimes I forget, sometimes it gets put off to the week after. But I think the point is like you try and have that as a goal in your mind and you know, sometimes we manage it, sometimes we don't. Even if it's fortnightly, just try and change it regularly. And on that subject, my next tip is to vacuum all the mattresses in your house. So that means taking off whatever waterproof covers you've got on and vacuuming the mattress there. I try and do that about once a month or so. And what you need to do is really, really get into all of the corners of the mattress. Like the mattress around the edges will probably have like piping all around. So really try and get in there because it's those little corners and things where the bugs like to hide. You won't necessarily see them. You won't necessarily see the eggs. Um, you won't necessarily see the remnants of them. So even if it looks pristine, give it a little vacuum anyway, you'll be amazed at what is living in there. My third tip is when you are spring cleaning or doing a really, really thorough deep clean, to get rid of all of the dust underneath your bed. I can guarantee you, even if you live in the cleanest house in the land, you'll have some dust, you'll have hair, all sorts of things underneath your bed, and that's the kind of environment that bed bugs and dust mites really, really thrive in. Now, just to mention, bed bugs do bite, hence the phrase, don't let the bed bugs bite. They do bite. Dust mites don't bite, but they can irritate allergies and they can lead to skin irritation. So it is a good idea to like, just be on top of them regardless. Okay, so if you keep a lot of boxes under your mattress, like I do, pull them all out, dust them all, give them all a wipe down because they will be dusty and then get your vacuum cleaner under there. If you can't move the bed, which like I really struggle to because it's so heavy, I just can't move it on my own, then um, get the long attachment on your vacuum cleaner and the hose and just like reach under there all around the sides, get right into the corners, right around all of the legs of the bed as well, like all the nooks and crannies, really, really vacuum it out, be really, really thorough about it, and you'll pick up all of the dust and the dirt and the hair under there and any eggs and bugs that are living there. Make sure that you empty the vacuum cleaner bag or container, whatever it is on your vacuum cleaner. As soon as you've done that, get rid of the bag because anything living in there then is out of your house. Okay, my fourth tip is to wash and vacuum your pet's 
bedding. Now our cat lives, lives, our cat sleeps on a kind of footstool thing that he commandeered many years ago and then we put a blanket on top of that so what I regularly do is I vacuum the blanket then I stick it in the washing machine at 60 degrees and then I give the um, seat underneath, the um, footstool underneath a really really thorough vacuum, pull it all out, vacuum under there, anywhere where your pet sleeps. So our pet also sleeps on an armchair he loves it on there, so really, really good vacuum of sofas, armchairs, right round the back, literally anywhere. If he has a particular corner of the carpet where he likes to sleep, for example, hoover that thoroughly, because that's where fleas are going to be dropping eggs or living. Even if you flee your pet, which is actually my next point, to make sure you treat your pet for fleas, even if you flee your pet every single month religiously, you still need to follow these steps to vacuum because even if they've been fleed, it doesn't mean that a rogue flea won't jump on them and come into your house. Like, it can still happen. Or they can jump on you and come into your house. So, fleas can still happen. Keep on top of it by keeping the bedding clean and vacuuming anywhere where they sleep. My next tip is in the living room, vacuum all rugs and lift the rug up, get right underneath there, get underneath your sofas, get right into the crevices of like sofa cushions and right down to the back, everywhere where you can get to get rid of dust, bits of food, hair, all those kind of places. Those are places that dust mites love to live. Just any bit of furniture around your house that you don't move particularly often, move it out the way, get down there, vacuum as much as possible. Sofa cushion covers, if you can wash those at 60 degrees, fantastic, do it. If not, then you may want to follow this next tip. My next tip is to wash soft toys. So soft toys are an absolute gold mine for dust mites, they just love them. Um, and if your kids are anything like mine, then they'll have a lot of them. So what I try to do, I say try to do, the kids do have a lot of them, so I don't necessarily always manage to do this, but once a year I have a big clean of the toys. So that might involve hand washing them, but that isn't necessarily as effective at killing the bugs. So what I like to do is anything that I can wash on a hot wash, I wash it on a hot wash. Anything that I can't, stick it in the freezer. And that's what you can do with your sofa cushions as well. Make a little space on a shelf somewhere. If you put things in the freezer for 24 hours, then it is going to kill any bugs or eggs or anything like that that are living on or around the toy. And that is ideal for things that are dry clean only or hand wash only. My next tip is to do with vacuuming again. When you are vacuuming, it's a really good idea and it picks up more things if you first vacuum horizontally and then vacuum vertically so don't just go over one spot back forward back forwards and then consider it done go over in the other direction as well it's just a much more thorough way of picking up everything between the fibers of the carpet pile my next tip i'm going to touch on yet another common household pet and that is the clothes moth which is so annoying i don't know about you but they just love woolly jumpers, they'll have a gnaw on them, leave a teeny tiny hole, but it's visible enough that it kind of wrecks the item of clothing. So you can get all sorts of products that put moths off from eating your clothes. You can get sprays, you can get like little hangers that go on your clothes rail. I like these sort of little sachets, tablets, that you just tear off, pop it open, and you just put it in drawers. I leave them at the bottom of my wardrobe. Um, with larger spaces like wardrobes and big boxes and stuff like that, I'll put two in, one on either end. And you literally just pull the foil off. And when it has expired, the word end comes up because they don't last forever, unfortunately. But these ones are really good because they are lavender scented, which I love. And honestly, I had such a problem with clothes moths um, a couple of years ago. And these just really knocked it on the head. I don't know what it is about it, but it kills them, they don't like it, and they stay away. Okay, and my final tip is to do with ticks. Now, there has been a lot written about ticks recently because of the rise in Lyme disease. Lyme disease is quite a scary thing, but the thing to remember is that ticks do not all carry Lyme disease, and they do not a tick bite does not necessarily mean that you will get Lyme disease, okay? So both of my girls have had tick bites. Um, it's kind of grim when you see them. So my eldest had one on her tummy once. And I can remember looking at it like, that's weird. It looks like a teeny tiny scab or something. And then I was like looking at it closer and I was like, oh, it's got legs. Oh, 
so grim um, and then my youngest had one here recently which was really weird I remember I was washing her in the shower and um, I noticed it I was like oh that's weird and I sort of gave it a little brush and it wasn't coming off um, so I looked at her closer once we were out of the shower and I'd run the towel over it still hadn't come off I looked at it I was like she cut herself and I was like no no it's sticking out it's got legs it's a tick Ew. Um, so with ticks look there's a few things you can do to avoid your child being bitten but as I said like one of my kids was bitten on the stomach and the other one was up here God knows how the tick managed to get on her up here um, mostly tick bites will be around like your legs and feet so if you're going walking in um, meadows any fields with long grass try and wear long trousers socks um, you know that kind of thing just kind of prepare for that environment if kids are going running off into long grass try and make sure that their skin is as covered as much as possible and then if they have been in an environment where you think there might have been ticks give them a little once over and just know that ticks are teeny teeny tiny kind of easy to miss and just think oh it's just a little speck of dust or something um, so you need to kind of look a little bit closer and you'll see their little legs um, sticking out so they burrow in um, head first like this and when it comes to taking them out what you want to do is be very very gentle not just yank them out because you want to get the whole tick out rather than have its head detach in your child's body it's gross I know so you get a pair of tweezers very very gently grasp the tick don't squeeze and just put it out and it might it, it will feel gross it will like kind of come out with a very teeny tiny pop it's kind of gross um, but it will come out and then just check your child keep an eye on them make sure they don't have a rash if they get ill if they have a fever anything like that in the days following a tick bite then go and see your doctor and get some medical advice but as I said in general tick bites are nothing to worry about just be aware of how you remove them if you do see one and be aware of what they look like so that you can spot them Okay guys, I really hope that these tips were useful for you. If you enjoyed this video, please hit subscribe. I would love it if you could support my channel. Thank you so much for watching guys. Take care, bye.